Primary 6 Listening Comprehension Practice Listening Comprehension Practice for Primary 6 Instructions to Teachers before you begin this practice listening exercise, please check that the volume of the speaker is audible to all your students. Adjust the volume of the speaker to ensure that all your students are comfortable with the level of volume. Instructions to students. In this practice listening exercise, you'll hear seven passages in total. You will hear each passage twice. In the question paper, you'll see the questions and three options for each question. Only one of the three options is the correct or the best answer. Choose the option which you think is the correct or best answer. Then put a tick in the box next to the option you have chosen as your answer. You will now hear 15 seconds of music before the exercise begins. Listen to passage 1, then answer questions 1 and 2. The June holidays are just round the corner. All students must be very excited. We at the Students' Activity Centre have lined up some interesting and exciting activities just for you. We believe, and you will agree with us, that the most exciting activity is the go-kart race. This event is for students who are 15 years old and above. For those below 15, we have the equally action-packed bicycle obstacle race where competitors will cycle to the finish line without hitting any of the obstacles on the race track. Log on to our website www.sac.com.sg for all the details you need about these two adventurous events. Those who prefer a more artistic activity, we have the War Mural Painting Competition. You will paint on a canvas during the competition. If your painting is selected, you will get to paint your picture on a real wall of a well-known building with your name on the painting. Isn't that thrilling? This painting competition is open to all primary and secondary school students. If you are talented, you should be a participant in this event. These are not the only activities we have in store. Please visit our website to see all the other exciting activities arranged for you this coming holidays. You need to register online for all these events. Your parents' written consent will be required without which your registration will not be accepted. Listen to this radio station for more information about the events in the next few days. We look forward to seeing you at our events for a joyful June holiday. Question 1. Which event is 16-year-old Ahmad not allowed to take part in? Question 2. According to the advertisement, which of these events is least adventurous? Listen to passage 2, then answer questions 3 and 4. Kim, what are you going to do this holiday? I'm going to visit my relatives in Malaysia. What about you? Malaysia? That's nice. As for me, I'm still not sure. My father told me we will stay put here and not go anywhere as he's busy with his work. However, mother suggested that she will bring me 
and my brother to visit Batam Island in Indonesia. Then my uncle said he will bring us to Australia for a week during the school holidays. So I'm not certain what I will be doing this holiday. That's quite unsettling. Yes, but I will know by this week for certain. I would really like to go to Australia as I've never been there before. I've heard that there is a long train journey in Australia. The train travels from Sydney in the east coast to Perth in the west coast, and the journey takes about four days. I'm not too excited about the train travel. Won't spending four days in a train be boring? I'd rather be on a cruise ship where there will be swimming pools, theater, and lots of other things we can do. I like the cruise too. Well, I'll be going to Malaysia in a van with my family. Let's hope this holiday will be an enjoyable one for us. Yes, I'm sure it will. Let's get going. We need to be in the library at 2 p.m. It's already 1.45 p.m. All right, let's go. Question 3. To which country is Rashida not likely to go during the school holiday? Question 4. Which type of transport do both Kim and Rashida like? Listen to passage 3, then answer questions 5 and 6. Singaporeans can easily go from one park to another through a linked network of park connectors. People can engage in various fun and recreational activities along the way enjoying scenic sights such picturesque waterways that link the main parks of the country. You can enjoy the scenery while walking, jogging, running, cycling or rollerblading along the park connectors. There are two major routes connecting the parks. The first is the 150 km round island route which goes around the country. This long route connects natural, cultural, historical and recreational sites that already exist. The second is the shorter 36 km route known as the C2C Trail. This route connects the Jurong Lake Gardens in the west of Singapore to the Loni Nature Corridor near the centre of the island, to Coney Island Park in the northeast. This route goes through many parks, nature areas and places of interest. With the C2C mobile application, those travelling along this route can use the trail guide to plan their journey. The park connectors serve to link communities together and provide opportunities for Singaporeans to interact with one another as they enjoy their journeys along these routes. They also provide opportunities for recreational activities such as skating, jogging, cycling and hiking. These park connectors bring to the many Singaporeans who are housed in concrete jungles a chance to connect with nature and enjoy its beauty. Question 5. Referring to the map above, which route will be taken by someone interested in sports? Question 6. Which route will someone take to reach Coney Island Park from Jurong Lake Gardens? Listen to passage 4, then answer questions 7 and 8. Iskandar will now tell us a joke. Thank you, Miss Lee. 
Good morning, all. I came across this joke and found it very funny, but sensible to a certain extent. I would like to share it with all of you. This happened in a school in Changi Road. One day, a teacher, Miss Tan, asked her students, Which is nearer to our school, Mandai or the moon? For a moment, there was silence in the class. Come on, boys and girls. This is such an easy question, said Miss Tan. Then Maria answered, Of course it is Mandai, teacher. The teacher smiled and said, Yes, absolutely. Then came a voice from the back of the classroom. Wrong! Everyone turned around and saw Gopal, the top English student in the class. Gopal, are you suggesting the moon is nearer to our school? asked the teacher. Yes, Miss Tan. His classmates looked at him in surprise. How is that, Gopal? Miss Tan asked. Gopal replied, You see, Miss Tan, I'm able to see the moon from Changi, but I can't see Mandai from here. Gopal's classmates burst out laughing. Gopal then went on with his explanation. Miss Tan, we can see what is near us, but we can't see what is further away from us, right? Therefore, what we can see must be near us, and what we can't see must be further away from us. Miss Tan looked amazed with his explanation. Gopal's classmate burst into laughter with their teacher. The teacher commented that Gopal was a smart boy who thinks in a different but positive way. Question 7. Who gave Miss Tan an unexpected answer to her question? Question 8. Which of the following was the explanation given for the unexpected answer? Listen to passage 5, then answer questions 9, 10, 11, and 12. Alright, boys and girls, settle down and listen carefully to some instructions regarding the excursion next week. As you already know, we will be visiting Amind next Thursday. Amind is a place where coins which we use as money are made. A mint is a high security area which is guarded by armed policemen. You must stay together at all times while we are there and listen to the instructions given by the tour guide. Now, I have some instructions for you. Pay close attention to what I have to say so that our excursion to the mint will be a smooth and enjoyable one. Each one of you should have a consent form by now. First, you must get the consent form signed by your parents. Hand them to me next Wednesday. I will say this again. All consent forms must be handed in by next Wednesday. Secondly, on the day of the excursion to the Mind, you must put on your best behaviour. Do not touch anything that is on display. Old and new coins and dollar notes will be displayed in showcases. You can see the displayed items but not touch the showcases. Thirdly, put on clean uniforms and shoes on the day of the excursion. We have to show that we are hygienic students. The fourth instruction is, while travelling to the excursion site, always remain seated in the bus with your seat belts fastened securely. No one should be standing or moving about in the bus. 
The fifth instruction is, be on the lookout for each other. You should be with your partner at all times. If a partner is missing, you should inform me immediately. Lastly, please remember to bring your notebook and pen to take some notes about the mint visit. You will be writing an article on the excursion, which is to be handed on Monday. Let's look forward to a fruitful and enjoyable excursion. Question 9. The teacher was giving some dash to her students. Question 10. The teacher and her students will go on the excursion on a Question 11. Which one of the following did the teacher repeat? Question 12. Based on what you have heard, which of the following is correct? Listen to passage 6, then answer questions 13, 14, 15 and 16. Good day to everyone. I will now read something I have written two days ago. I was jogging in a park near my home one evening. Out of the blue, I heard a loud bang coming from the direction I was jogging towards. The loud noise shocked the people in the park. Could it be a gunshot? I overheard a lady asking her friend as they walked. Sounds like it, said the friend as I overtook them. By then, some people were seen running the direction where the loud noise came from. I became very curious. I wanted to find out what the loud bang was all about. So I left the jogging path and ran towards the spot. Finally, I reached a huge banyan tree. The tree was cordoned off. There were already many people standing under the tree. Then I saw something unusual. There were two men in uniform standing round the tree. One of them had a rifle in his hands. From what some people around me were saying, I gathered that these men were there to catch a monkey. The monkey had escaped from a zoo nearby. The monkey has been causing disturbances to the people living nearby, frightening children and adults alike. They were from the National Parks Authority. I thought the two men were there to shoot the monkey down, but I was wrong. The rifle is used only to shoot small pellets that will make the monkey drowsy. If the monkey were to fall from the tree, the man would catch it with a large net before it falls to the ground. I was relieved to know that the monkey would be alive. As it was getting dark, I decided to leave the place and continue jogging. Question 13. The writer was... Question 14. What did the writer hear while he was jogging? Question 15. What made the writer leave the jogging path? Question 16. 
which one of the information is correct. Listen to passage 7, then answer questions 17, 18, 19, and 20. Good morning, teachers and friends. Today, I'm giving a presentation about a tree which we are all familiar with, the coconut tree. The coconut tree is a member of the palm tree family. It can grow to a height of up to 25 meters. Mature fruits, oval or round in shape, can be about 150 to 200 millimeters in diameter and have a thick, fibrous husk. A hard shell encloses both the flesh and liquid. Coconut fruits float readily and have been dispersed widely by ocean currents and by humans throughout the tropics. Coconut is the fruit of the coconut palm. Coconut flesh, also known as the kernel, is white in color and can be dried or eaten fresh. The liquid within the fruit is sweet and can be drunk straight from the fruit. Besides the edible flesh and the drink obtained from the coconuts, the harvested coconut also yields copra the dried extracted kernel, or flesh from which coconut oil, a major vegetable oil, is produced. The Philippines and Indonesia together produce copra and export them to countries around the world. The kernel can be grated and mixed with water to make coconut milk used in cooking and as a substitute for cow's milk. The dry husk yields coir, a fibre highly resistant to salt water and used in the manufacture of ropes, mats, baskets, brushes and brooms. There are many other beneficial uses of coconuts. Some useful products obtained from the coconut palm include toddy, palm cabbage and construction materials. Toddy, a beverage drunk fresh, fermented or distilled, is produced from the Swedish sap yielded by the young flower stalks when cut. Toddy is also a source of sugar and alcohol. Palm cabbage, the delicate young bud cut from the top of the tree, is like the buds from other palms, eaten as a salad vegetable. Mature palm leaves are used in thatching, and weaving baskets. The fibrous, decay-resistant tree trunk is incorporated into the construction of huts. It is also exported as a cabinet wood called porcupine wood. Thus, the coconut palm is a very useful tree as we have seen that almost all the parts of the tree are useful to us. The next time we look at a coconut tree, we should appreciate its usefulness. Thank you. Question 17. Which of the following statements is correct about the coconut palm? Question 18. Copra is obtained by Question 19 Coconut milk is a substitute for cow's milk means coconut milk Question 20. Which of the following statement is not true? <laughs>